Hello YouTube and welcome to our 36 Unity 3D tutorial. So dropping straight in, in the last tutorial mate finished off our inventory nearly. So made it so you can collect stuff. Um, it's easily expandable so all you do is add new items and it will automatically expand it. However, there is a big flaw which not a lot of people will probably have noticed. That is if we change level, we have 4434, four, change level. Nah, come here. And it turns to 0. It doesn't transport our variables across levels. Um, it's simple explanation for anyone who's interested. If not, um, it'll be quickly. But if we open up our uh, inventory GUI, uh, the grid is not a static variable. It's a normal variable, which means only this script can access it, which also means only this scene can access it. Um, we could make this into a static variable, but then it would mean recoding everything. If it comes to that, we will. But for now, I've sort of devised a simple solution which will fix it, but not it's not perfect fix. Um, what it will basically do, my fix, is scan this item's amount and any item over one, well over zero, so it, any item what the player actually has, it will add it to the grid. So if you've got 42 items, it will attempt to add all 42 to it. It will fail, then throw an error. But for now, it will work good because I very doubt a lot of you have 40 items. Because, yeah, so. Um, this is a simple for loop, what we're going to do. Um, all you do is check our items amount, anything over 1. It will um, change the image, tooltip and text of our grids. So this grid here to the correct one however it does not store it exactly how it is so if we go palm wood um, stone iron normal wood it won't store it like that when it switches levels it will store it in the ID thing so it'll store it if you have oak wood it'll store oak wood if not it'll leave that grid blank then store palm wood in the next one um, it's relatively simple to do, really easy. But first, before I do that, I'll show you the loading screen in case I forget. So this week's is, if you guess, Raiden. Mortal Kombat, the God of Thunder, um, the Elder... Try attempting to be Elder God. Um, he helped Liu Kang defeat Shao Kahn in the Earth Realm. So, um, that's that. Um, I've converted it to this. Um, yep, yeah, you can see that. Um, Raiden, is there. He's like, Raza. And it says... Raiden defeated Darkseid. Is it Seed or Side? Hmm. Comment below with that because I don't know. Darkseid? Darkseed? Hmm. Comment below. Thank you. Um, Raiden defeated Dark... Uh -huh, when the realms merged. After he sent send them back... That should be sent. Then back. He put Liu Kang in charge of Dark... Hmm. If you ever need Raiden, you can call him from his, from the Shaolin Monk's Monastery. Um, that gives our game a new building. We could add the Shaolin Monk's Monastery. Say so you go in, tap a button, call Raiden. The character like goes Raiden or something. Um, lightning effects come down. Raiden appears. He's like, yes. And then that'll be something cool we could add. Um, yeah, so that'll be in the description once I've fixed that error, obviously. So will that picture. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do first is go to our inventory, add items. In our function start is where we're going to put the for loop. The reason we're putting it in here is because this has the most um, connections to different scripts. So we need to be able to connect from the add inventory to inventory to player inventory. Now we need the items textures to set the images, but we also need the grids. Now if we were put it in the inventory GUI, it can't get to te add item texture without creating another variable. So it's just simpler to create it in here because this has already got both connections. So it's really simple. So first what we're going to do is create a simple for loop. We've done this many and many times. Simple for, then we need a, a variable to increase. So var i equals zero. So we'll start off with zero. Then we'll put i is less than. So what we're going to put less than? We want it, our maximum IDs items. So we don't want it scanning for five items if we've only got four. So the best way to do it is to get our player's amount but then the length of the array, which we've done many times already. So this is simply done by typing players inventory dot oops um item players amount that one and then dot length le yeah and then simple i plus plus which basically means plus it up every time. So plus it by one. You can also put plus one but 
just do it like that, just in case. So now at the moment, our for loop is set to the amount of ID items we have, which is four. Um, not in our inventory, it's just overall. So if you've got 250 items in game, but only four in your inventory, set that length, that'll set that length to 250. Um, our game at the moment can have as many items as you like, which is really good. I try to build the code around so it's easily expandable and it's not like one thing you can't change it so it's really good now the first thing what we're going to do is actually we're going to do put an if statement inside our for loop so at the moment it does it and checks it which is good but we want it to check if the items amount um, hit the players amount is over one so basically if we have an item of each ID, if we have oak wood, then it'll be over one because it will have one item. So it'll be, we'll have it. So the easiest way to do this is type if, and then we're going to copy this players inventory because I'm getting sick of typing it. Players inventory amount is, then we need what array number do we want? We want our i. So i starts off at zero, checks for i. Is it over one? Well, over zero because if it's over zero, it's not zero. Yeah. Um, if you ever want to put, say, 1, if you want it over 1, but you want it to be 1 or over, if you put that, it'll just skip 1. So if you put more than equals to, basically, if it's 1 or more, then it'll do it. So now that we've done that, that's going to check each of our items. And if it is, what we're just going to simply do, so I can show you something, is type print i. So it'll print whatever number this is, and you'll just see how fast it scans it. So it's pretty fast, I'll tell, say that. You won't even notice it. The all three will just appear. But yeah, so best way to do this now is to now we're gonna set our image, tooltip, and text. So the image we've already done, that's the textures, the item texture, which is basically that one. Um then we're gonna set a tooltip, which we've done by item ID, and then our text with plays amount. Simple as that. So what we can actually do is just copy these through here. It's much easier. Neaten it up. Right. So the image is the first one. Uh, we don't want this equal to the new item. What we need to do is set it to the textures. So we want it to go and get the textures. And then we want it to be item texture. And then what array do we want? We want I. Like so. So now that will go and get the image of the correct ID. But it's not array grid what we want. We want I. Like so. There we go. Oops. There we go. So now I'll say i equals zero. Zero's image will equal to zero item texture. Done. Um, we're going to move the text to the bottom because we want that to do last because that's the most important thing. So if we put it last, it'll make sure it definitely do it. Um, because if I put it in the middle before and last time I tried it, it messed up and just wouldn't scan it all and I don't know why. But put it at the bottom anyway to be safe. Now the tooltip will equal to the player's inventory ID, which is correct. We want the player's ID, but we don't want it to be that. We just want it to be I. That's it. And same again here. Um, player's inventory text will equal the player's amount I to string. That's it. We're done. That's the simple for loop what I'll check. So it'll check if it's over 1. If it's over 1, it'll add it. If not, it won't. So what I'm going to do is build up this console here. And I'm just going to put it around here so you can see. When As soon as I click play, you will start scan and say no. Well, okay, wait till I collect some items. So when we switch levels, it'll do it, I'm telling you. And it'll be super cool. So if we collect some random items, let's see we've got 3312. So we jump in here, boom, straight away. You didn't even see it go 1, 2, 3. It's all there straight away. So it scanned every single one. Press I, there they are. 3, 3, 1, 2, which is good. Now for the problem I told you about earlier, which if none of you got understood it. At the moment, these are laid out IDs. So this is 0, this is 1, and 2, and 3. Yeah. So if we were to miss 1 and collect 2, yeah, and then miss three and collect a four some fours it doesn't matter how the amount of it so at the moment it's at the beginning which is correct that works but if we were to trade levels it only scans them too because it's the item id is zero so if we press i as you can see it moves it around and our game hasn't actually got a move thing yet because we don't 
might add that later. But as you can see, it'll put it in the correct ID order. If you want that, that's all good. You get your inventory is done. It's finished. Customize it more, and you're done. But that's not a permanent solution for me because I don't want it like that. It's got to store it. Because if you like me, when you play RPG games or something, you organize your backpacking the correct manner. So like your woods on the top line, your stones on the bottom, your iron on the next. And um, this game doesn't work like that, so we need to remove that. But that's it for this tutorial. Um, next tutorial, we're going to break away from the advanced coding for a bit. We're going to fix all our loading screens because at the moment we've got loads of loading screens with characters we do not have. Um, I think out of all of them, we only have one, two, three, four. I think we have four. And we've got like 15 loading screens, I think. And there we go. 12. Uh, we'll have 13 next tutorial, so we need to add them in. We'll be doing that. Um, we'll be adding loads of some more buildings, just a random landscape episode. So thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And see you later.